say up here now in for this last text section, but uh, you know that uh, the name of this section is Section 3 Education at the Cross Road. Everybody might say, why the education is in the, at the Cross Road? Why? What happened? How was the education before? Until the moment we have said, how is the university today? Or education today will be, will be the uh, society tomorrow. And today we say that education is in the cross road. All this happened because you know that uh, until yesterday, until, uh, we have seen the, the professor of education as a guy that has the key to solve every problem that is connected to this subject. And more or less, each of us that we are here, around this table here, we are a monkey of our professor. We imitated our professor. And when we are in the difficult situation, we see how we solve this problem, my professor, for example, and the others. And I've seen the professor that amazing, that know everything about the subject. And we have said that the professor sell the mind every day. And even we not say what the professor said, we fall down. We don't pass the exam. But what happened today? Do, does the professor know everything about the subject? Everybody was saying no. Why? Because at the beginning of the uh, 17 years, information technology, computer science has begun. And this change all over the world. This and the world today is like a point on the hand because in the phone that we have here we can get everything inside there. And you don't need for professor for each other and so on. We can take from there every information. And so what will be with the professor for the moment for the future? What will be the position of the university? And this is the reason that the name here is the university are at the cross the road. Because of the other, on the other hand, we have huge information that is inside of website, inside of uh, sciences, computer sciences, all the information today is digitalized and we can get inside and every information. We have a set of computers that we have stimulated for uh, how, how we want unknown factors and we simulated that to make every solution that we want to, to find out the best solution by computers and not by our data. Uh, to the Karanash. To the Karanash. Thanks. And to find something to solve. So, this is the reason that uh, we have discussed many times together and uh, I think that is the obligation of uh, this one, the incident of the university, to find out the, the, the role of the teachers to find out what kind of knowledge that the professor must give to the students, what will be the future of engineers, what will be the future of any specialist in any field, and what kind of uh, professor or what kind of engineers or specialist the society needs for tomorrow. So, we have uh, <coughs> many, many ideas about this. And uh, I need to discuss together, and together we need to discuss with each other. But uh, I, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, I need to discuss all about this, but I want to, to take the, the floor now to Professor Taya Ionescu from the Sibeco Institute of Advanced Study. Is he or President Bana? It's okay, so I think she will watch it. Okay, to the day as well. And we will discuss about this. But we so need to go to the way. So is on the way. So now uh, we shall shift and uh, Mr. Bergonescu will start okay. presenting about. I said for you I want to be here, but you said no. <laughs> I asked you to be here, but you said no. So, so. <laughs> but uh, this is just discussed together, but this is not problem that we solved uh, we solved today and uh, the, we are not here then, but compared to the other people that are interested about this, we are not here. So uh, let us ask them to have some ideas about this. 
Thank you. Uh, my name is Dan Borbulescu. Um, I am a member of uh, the advisory board of Arkansas. Uh, and uh, also I am on the board of uh, Bucharest uh, High School, College National in Mirakovica. So uh, I uh, I'll make a presentation uh, that is uh, useful also for uh, uh, tertiary education uh, at the universities, but also for uh, high school secondary education. So the, the concept uh, that uh, aims to uh, bring more students in uh, the classroom rather than in the streets using the social network. This is my definition about uh, MOOCs. The presentation, of course, uh, it's kind of poetic, uh, university in the social world. Uh, so what is, uh, I, I'll try to respond to, to the following uh, issue. What is a MOOC? Where did the MOOCs came from? The history of MOOCs, of course, the benefits, uh, the challenges, some example of uh, massive open online courses. Uh, example, uh, how can we start the MOOC? And the case for uh, uh, massive open online courses developed by uh, Black Sea Universities Network. Uh, so, there are uh, two uh, definitions I found on the web. Uh, one is uh, category of online course where the participants are distributed and course materials also are dispersed across the web. As of uh, 2012 August, the MOOCs are a very recent variant of online education, which itself is a form of distance education. This is from Wikipedia. Another source, uh, massive open online courses are large-scale online courses in the thousands of participants where an expert or group of experts from a particular field both create a large draw of the course and second facilitate a multi-week series of interactive lectures and discussions from critical forms on critical issues from that field. Uh, but in fact, this, apart from the definition, I uh, pick up two uh, very uh, expressive uh, uh, video clips uh, from uh, YouTube. So, uh, if you can click on the first, what is a mock video on YouTube? It's written and narrated by Dave Cornell and video by Neil Gilles. If we have sound also. So the students become uh, uh, 
also started to teach their colleagues. Uh, so, about the history of Ox. In 2008, ACNI, uh, Social Media and Open Education, uh, intro to open education in fall 2007. In 2008, Connectivism, the first mock. Uh, in 2009, Connect Your uh, PLN Lab, the second one, also made by the same group, Connectivism. 2010, Plank Personal Learning Environments, Networks and Knowledge, fall 2010. In 2011, Change.mock, Change Education, Learning and Technology. And EdMock, Online Learning Today and Tomorrow. Uh, DS 106, Digital Storytelling. So these are mobile mock, mobile learning. Uh, in 2012, uh, Mobi Mock, uh, Games Based Learning Mock, that are designed for education, uh, for educators who want to learn more games, simulation and game-like environments for education. So, one of the most known uh, open courses, uh, MIT Open Courseware. Is this a mock? Let's uh, answer, the short answer is no. According to Cornier and Siemens, a uh, mock is distinctly different from the idea of open in the open content movement. Where open in the, sense, in the sense of being free from intellectual property stipulation that restrict the use and reuse of content. So it's not just an IP issue. Making content publicly available is not enough because it, it only focuses on the content. The proposed benefit of mocks, on the other hand, is the interaction, the access to the debate, to the negotiation of knowledge not to the statute cataloging of content. Essentially, MOOCs and other open courses are open. It is transparent in the practice of knowledge negotiation and developing the field of study, opposed to just allowing open content consumers to be aware of latest developments. So another example of uh, <coughs> Ivy uh, League uh, University that developed its own uh, uh, massive online course. So our Stanford, Stanford classes uh, the MOOC. The MOOCs uh, seem to differ from Stanford classes in these ways. First, they have offered direct access to, force, uh, to course facilitators. Uh, Stanford doesn't, it allows just uh, uh, their own registered student while uh, a mock, uh, op it's open to everybody. Uh, second, inclusion, inclusion of all participants. Third, ranking of performance. This is uh, what a mock doesn't uh, do, but Stanford courses does. The degree of separation between accredited and online participants. On the mock is uh, a lesser degree, and the Stanford courses, it's a great Five, a flexible and personalized, personalized curriculum. Uh, it applies to a MOOC, but not to, to Stanford courses. Six, uh, the, to define or develop the field. MOOC offers this uh, um, facility uh, while Stanford does it. Other differences may emerge as the Stanford courses proceed. Stanford's large scale courses do not appear to be mocks, but they are massive, are online, appear to involve, invite both real time and asynchronous participants and self organization, and make the session and forms publicly available like mocks do. Can we go back to the video clip, please?
The massive open online course is a response to the challenges faced by organizations and distributed disciplines at a time of information overload. It used to be that when you wanted to know about something, you could do a few things. You could ask someone, you could buy a book, you could try to figure it out for yourself, or you could call a school. If that school offered a course and the thing you were trying to figure out, you could go there and take it. You could get access to information about a topic. An instructor could comb through journals and books to pull the information together from a library. You might even find others who are also interested in the same things as you were. The moon.
also made by David Cormier and uh, George Simmons and Stephen Dobbs. So, for someone of us who want to start a mock, I uh, pick up some uh, web pages with uh, uh, how learning to mock a mock, uh, designing and running a mock, uh, the mock guide, open learning design studio, so tools that will help, there are open free software tools that can be used by any university to start develop a pilot mock. So the, the presentation can be made to all the participants so you will have access to, to the links. So my uh, uh, my case will uh, will finish with uh, putting uh, question or uh, um, how to develop uh, mock by Black Sea University Network, and uh, I am open for suggestion from you. Uh, just three ideas: we, uh, Black Sea University Network can join a mock startup like uh, Coursera or edX. Uh, develop a multilingual mock with instant translation. So all the mocks until now are based on English, and uh, uh, the multilingual mock uh, fits to the multilingual uh, uh, structure of uh, Brexit University Network. Uh, also, to share live open courses, transmit. Uh, with uh, uh, streaming, video streaming on internet with instant translation between uh, uh, universities in, uh, which have the same time uh, line. Well, uh, I, uh, another um, uh, startup that, uh, that I uh, research, uh, this is not for universities or secondary education, is uh, for uh, uh, kids in uh, uh, gymnasium, uh, a startup uh, learning uh, discovery which offers the possibility for uh, uh, kids in Japan to um, chat uh, in real time with kids in Australia using uh, not instant translation from the web but uh, proprietary software that uh, helps the kids to learn uh, the language and so on. So, for a, for a uh, university's uh, uh, network like Black Sea, uh, is an opportunity to add the multi-language uh, items on a, on a mock. Thank you. I, if you have questions. No, uh, yes. Thank you very much for your mock. Meanwhile, 
I would like to show him that we already started work. <laughs> Uh, so, under this project Argos, five universities from the Brex University Network, the Istanbul Technical University, the Barna University, Kishinev, Sinferopol and Constanza, built up a cluster which uh, was initially for e-learning. We developed a common package of uh, modules for uh, uh, teaching support. And further on, it has been developed as a book. So at present, we are in the process of extending and implementing all functions of MOOC. Because as you have shown, uh, MOOC today is an almost professional uh, activity. There are very well structured and very soon there are under preparation several standards for MOOCs. So from that perspective, it is going to be quite uh, professional approach to that. So in our case, uh, you could see that in our book we already have several modules that have been already prepared and are available. And uh, in the, let's say, next period, we agreed with Hewitt Packard to develop a book on high performance computing and cloud computing. And uh, I would like to welcome the presence of uh, Professor Mitrake. Uh, and I'm sure that with his support and his team from Polytechnic University, we shall be able to really develop it. Thank you. Camila, Lisa, please, is your turn now? Thank you. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I'm bringing a piece of news to you. Education is not happening only in schools and universities, it's happening also in libraries. And I know it's shocking, not that much at all. Um, and I'm going to explain how. How is that possible? How is it possible that education, especially lifelong learning, which we consider as part of the education, um, is happening in libraries? And for that reason, now we'll give you a little bit of a background about the Bibliomet program. The Bibliomet program is an initiative of the Global Libraries. Um, Global Libraries is part of a type of funding that Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is, offers, is offering for the, for the libraries around the world. So Bibliomet is a Bill and Melinda Gates funded project. So we have a budget of $26.9 million. And it's implemented in Romania by an American organization called IREX. We have a large number of partners. We have Romanian partner, partners like the Ministry of Culture, the Association of Librarians from Romania, but also other NGOs like EOS and um, corporate partners like Microsoft and Intuitex. Bibionet is a program which lasts for five years. 2014 will be the last year of implementation and the goal of the Bibliomet program is to support libraries and librarians with technology and training in order to improve the life and the welfare of the Romanian communities. The objectives are to provide equipment to public libraries. We are only working with public libraries, not with academic or school libraries and the reason is quite obvious, I think. Public li a public library is a place where anyone, any Romanian citizen, or for that matter, any foreign citizen, can get in and access information. Second, we train librarian. We think that a computer put in a room, whichever room, uh, without someone who is able to use it to the full potential, it's only another piece of furniture. So unless you have people who are able to know how to operate a computer, a computer is useless. That's why we're putting very much emphasis on training librarians in, into being able to use the computers. Other two objectives are the support of the um, Association of the Librarians from Romania and to um, foster government support for the sustainability of the system of public libraries. At the first glance, Bibliomet looks like a program where some people will money put computers in but libraries and you couldn't be more wrong because Bibliomet is a program about people and about changing a mentality. If by raising hands 
I would ask you how would you describe a Romanian library today? How many of you would you say it's a dusty place? Never been there. <laughs> right. Oh, sorry, I should ask you that. How many of you have, have, have been to a public library in the last five years? <laughs> right. And from those of you who have been, which one of you think that the library is a dusty place, full with books and with people which are far away from being nice? Right. <laughs> we have conducted several researches before, um, enter, before implementing the program in Romania and the, what we have seen is something that is existing in many other countries. So Romania is not singled out in this situation. One in ten Romanians went to public libraries prior to our program. And people who are going there were going mainly for books, but we went to some public libraries in the rural area and the collection of books, the newest books, were books from 1990s, while specialized books, especially in the area of agriculture, let's say, were books in 1954, talking about collectivity and whatever. So what we have seen is that libraries have been underfunded by everyone who has been in power. But also what we have seen from other countries in the world is that libraries have great potential. And yes, they have great potential into changing communities. And before moving forward, I would like to uh, join you, to ask you to join me in seeing a very short presentation movie of the Bibliomet and very few achievements that we could present in a three minute video.
fortunately the movie has been, well, fortunately or unfortunately, the movie has been uh, filmed a couple of years ago and had a different minister of culture. However, not much has been changed since, so I'm positive that the current minister of culture would have made the same statement. Libraries are fully underfunded. Uh, but libraries are becoming more and more community centers, and um, I would like to show you um, the results that we have got so far. We still have one year of implementation. So, currently we have in the program 2,280 libraries fully equipped. And when I'm saying fully equipped, I'm saying that each library has at least four computers with free access to internet. So, if you're, if you're a Romanian citizen and you're going to a big planet library, you have free access to internet. Uh, this means that almost 85% of all libraries in Romania are currently connected to internet and have technology. Um, other types of, of uh, technology that we offer to um, libraries are scanners, printers, uh, video projectors, screens, everything that like a modern office needs today. Um, we have also set up 41 training centers. So each county library in Romania has a training center with accredited trainers. It means that if a community has an educational need, these people are able to put together a training course and deliver it to the community. They don't only have the capacity to deliver training, they have the capacity to identify the community needs and evaluate if the training has been successful. We have 105 librarian trainers. Some libraries have seen that there are so many people coming to courses that they decided to have more than two trainers. For instance, Constanza County Library has currently so many seniors enrolled for the IT courses that they have to plan them for the next six months. So if you're a senior and you're from Constanza and you would like to take an IT class at the county library, you can do it today because there are so many people who heard about it and they are being currently in training. Uh, we also have trained rural librarians in IT, which means that now most of the uh, rural librarians in Romania are able to write email, communicate through Skype, have a Facebook account, and not only that, but they can help children whose mothers are in Italy set up Skype accounts and communicate with the parents abroad. And one of our most successful projects is called Mommy Still Loves You. It's a project through which we're trying to put together children left home with the parents who are abroad and um, all over Europe or in other countries around the world. They're left home uh, and as you know from a, a bunch of research, they are developing very serious psychological problems due to the lack of contact with parents. We had a situation in Francia County where the county library used her own phone to talk to the mother in Italy and help her set up a Skype account so she's able to talk to her son at home. Another training course that almost all the rural librarians and local librarians from Romania have um, attended is uh, called the Fundamentals of New Library Services. In this way, we're helping librarians understand what are the community needs in terms of education. I'm sure that the image, that the stereotype image that most of us have about librarians is that it's an old lady with glasses sitting behind the desk and shushing the people, saying that in the library it has to be silenced. One of the things that this program has managed, has managed to change is, sh is showing the librarians that silence is not good, noise is good, people interacting is good. For this reason, many libraries, both rural and county libraries, they become hubs for citizens to meet and plan and work together and find solutions to common problems. So how cool? is to get an education in the library. I would say that this is the new, the hippest thing. And you, you will see on YouTube many films where the hipsters are now meeting at the library. Yes, they're meeting in the public square, but also they're meeting at the library. It's cool now to speak Romanian correctly. It's cool now to speak, to write properly in a, in a proper grammar. I'm putting here a few statements that IFLA, which is the International Federation of Library Association, 
has issued in terms of repositioning libraries as lifelong learning centers. And one of them says, libraries should become lifelong learning centers because they guarantee universal and continuous access to learning. Another issue for which libraries should become lifelong learning center is that they're bringing learning closer to home. Basically, each town in Romania has a library. Well, around 90% of uh, rural localities and, and towns in Romania have libraries. So everybody who has a library in a town has the opportunity to improve their education. They have, or they can provide effect, effective teaching and learning methods. And what I would like to point out is that Romanian librarian trainers are part of the nonformali.ro. Nonformali.ro is a network of professionals from in life learn, lifelong learning education who are, who are using non-formal teaching methods. And this is something that we're seeing more and more in universities and in schools as well. But it's very well suited for the library setting because the library has so much, so many resources. Another view in which we can see the librarians is someone who's offering guidance for learning. Librarians, if we, if they want to know everything and you know um, have so many competencies as we envision for them, they should become astronauts. But then it's impossible. It's an, it's an impossibility. So what we're working with is that librarians have the capacity to guide learning. They already have the capacity of being um, managers of information. What we would like them to have as competence is to guide learning. So if, if somebody is coming to the library and say, you know, I would like to prepare my garden for the winter, librarian has the books, but at the same time, they have the capacity to Google it, to find the best online resources. So what is happening now is not what a lot of people would say. If you're putting computers in libraries, that will kill reading. Our research is showing that since computers have arrived in the library, the number of people who got a library card has increased. While people are waiting in line to get time on the internet, they're, they're grabbing a book. If children are coming to the library and they want to go online, grandparents or parents, they're getting a book. Libraries are working more and more for the, or through the intergenerational education. We have a project in Constanza County where nephews are teaching their grandparents how to browse. How cool is that? And when does this happen in a family setting? Another thing that if I stay in, in its manifesto is that libraries, through the open access to internet, they are empowering users. So climate in which even the shyest person feels able to ask for help. Going into a library and having a friendly setting where you can ask everything, it's something that we would like to see more, probably also in the Romanian universities. Not that I'm criticizing anyone here, me being part of the corpus of professors in the Romanian universities. You have there a list of courses that public libraries are already offering to their to their public. Um, how to write a CV? This is one of the most successful courses. A lot of unemployed people, instead of going to the pub, they're going out of the library. And we have research which is showing that people understand <coughs> I'm sorry, that the librarian can be a resourceful person in terms of getting a job. Choosing a career. This is a training goal that we have just finished piloting in uh, Timish County and also it has been requested in Hunedoara County. We're, one of the things that we have noticed, uh, especially in high school um, students, is that they don't know which career to pursue. <coughs> Sorry. As a result, we have developed a training course at the library. And libraries have partnered with high schools. And as a result of that, many um, high school students from the 11th and 12th grade took the course and understood better what their options are before going and choosing the university. Blogging, digital storytelling, this is like, it, it, it goes very well with the mission of the library through the digital storytelling course. We took senior citizens and we taught them how to use the computer at the same time with allowing them to tell their personal life story. 
and on a dedicated YouTube channel, a lot of seniors from Rancha County, uh, Constanza County, Bihor, and so on, they're telling their lives in a very short digital narrative up to three minutes. <coughs> you see their courses on blogging, English language, online banking. Grandma online, the one that I told you, where nephews are teaching their grandparents how to browse. And the most successful course that we had so far is IT for seniors. A lot of senior citizens are in many rural locations and also in small towns. They have no options how to spend their time. And they're coming to the library and so far what they've done is just they were reading the newspapers. What is happening now, what we have seen is that senior citizens through the use of internet, they became more engaged. We have a, a, a lady from Salo County who set up an email account and she was sending the mayor every day emails related to the holes in the road from her home to the library. At some point the mayor has replied and said, Dear Madam, stop sending me emails, I will fix the problem. What we have noticed is also that um, it's a good opportunity for senior citizens to connect and form networks and friendships. So, yes, more and more um, libraries are becoming hubs for, for, for putting together social networks in real life. So far, more than 4,000 citizens of Romania have benefited from these courses and what I can tell you is that we will not stop there. Because you may not believe me, I put here some copies from newspapers where um, these training courses organized by libraries are mentioned and are being published. about him and said, I'm Gypsy, but 
I'm, I'm not stealing and I've never stolen in my life. But because of my skin, people would not hire me. And he just posted that on YouTube. And as a result of that, people have seen that and they started hiring him. And now he has a job in the town hall. And in Cluj County Library, we had this course delivered on how to write a CV. We had this course delivered to 427 people. And upon the end of the course, three of them has, have already gotten jobs. I know that you might seem well, still 427, but imagine that the investment we had in that, in that course has been $2,000. So that is the amount of money we have paid for the design and delivery of the course. Now, if these three people have got that job, that means that in the five years we have got the money back, the investment uh, has come back to us. And research studies that are conducted in many other global libraries, countries, because it's not only Romania, the country where the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is investing, Moldova, uh, Bulgaria and Turkey will be soon uh, one of the global libraries countries, so a lot of countries around the Black Sea are part of that, show us that the return ratio, so the return of investment led to investing in, in public libraries and in, in library services, it, it, it has a higher ratio return. So what I would like to ask you is to look at libraries with different eyes, think of libraries as potential education partners, especially in the countries around the Black Sea, because a lot of the libraries around the Black Sea are changing due to the funding provided by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And yeah, education can happen everywhere, information is everywhere, and libraries are one of the catalysts that can help in having a better life, a better education. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. If you don't mind, that there is any initiative regarding access of people with disabilities to the library? Yes, there are initiatives. For instance, the county library in Yash has um, received a grant from the Biblionet to put together a library for people, uh, for blind people. So, people who have um, uh, that type of impairment, they can access books. Uh, a lot of libraries are putting together um, the necessary means for the people with um, physical disabilities to be able to access books. And I think there is an example, but I cannot tell you where, where you have um, some kind of um, sophisticated system for people who are both uh, hearing impaired and blind. But I, if you give me the email, I can give you more information. Thank you. Gentlemen, I'm uh, very honored to speak uh, uh, in this uh, selective audience and uh, I would like to uh, bring in a uh, uh, rather different approach from what I have heard so far. Uh, maybe I will uh, concentrate on uh, CIVECO's efforts to contribute in the education in the pre-university sector of population. Uh, we believe that uh, without uh, proper education in this field, uh, the university education and the preparation for life as a whole uh, has a lot to suffer. Uh, the material in front of me is rather longish, but I will uh, skip uh, quickly read. Um, we are a company which has 21 years of activity. We have uh, 1,300 employees. Uh, our uh, uh, area of business is wide, but uh, education and learning 
this. Uh, I will go quickly through other uh, preoccupations in Siveco. Uh, I would uh, point out that uh, we are uh, present in 27 countries on four continents. And uh, regarding e learning, the presentation is uh, obsolete because uh, two new customers have been added, namely Malta and uh, Dubai. Our activity is uh, uh, conducted in partnership with uh, representative uh, uh, international ski partners and uh, this activity has been uh, rewarded by uh, almost 200 uh, awards and uh, well, we are very proud of that. Now, uh, Coming to the point, we have an uh, e-learning integrated approach which starts from uh, uh, early age children, uh, goes through academic activity and of course our services are offered to enterprises and to those uh, uh, usually classified as uh, adult learners. Our principle is uh, very solid. Lifelong learning should be the line to follow. I will skip uh, these things which have been presented on other opportunities. Uh, perhaps it should be pointed out that our approach is based on uh, Bloom Anderson taxonometry. And uh, I would say, in fact, why we are here today. We think that uh, it is about time to bring a new paradigm in the pre university education in Romania. Uh, this is a very ambitious objective. Of course, we cannot uh, carry it uh, out uh, by ourselves. This is why we are uh, not only actively involved in cooperation with uh, officials in Romania, but also we are open to cooperation with anybody who uh, thinks embarking into such a venture is uh, worth doing. We start from the fact that the current uh, pre-university education status in Romania is good, but uh, there is also much room for improvement. When I say that, I have in mind the fact that uh, the products of the pre-university education are good candidates for the <coughs> high education and I speak, when I speak that, I, I, I have to consider uh, my experience as a professor in the University Polytechnica in Bucharest for uh, 40 years plus. Uh, because there is much room for improvement, uh, we have to create a new paradigm and this has to take into account what are the major trends in education <coughs> in the years to come. For the beginning we fix on the period 2014-2020 uh, but when we speak about education such a time horizon is a very limited one because uh, it takes a lot to educate a generation and it takes even more to be able to assess the results, the methodologies, the principles you employed uh, and whether to, to find out whether or not they have been good or bad. <coughs> it's uh, worth mentioning the fact that uh, uh, Romania has made uh, huge efforts in introducing the uh, recent uh, achievement 
fields of uh, information and communication technology into the learning process. Uh, it is enough to say perhaps that uh, the pre-university education employs the SAY system, a system uh, uh, which started in 2002 and now is its uh, fifth uh, stage of uh, development. We concentrated on uh, local needs in Romania but also uh, we thought that it is uh, worthwhile exporting uh, Romanian expertise and this is why we export not only learning platforms but also uh, digital educational content and uh, we do that uh, for uh, quite a while and or with all modesty quite successful in the period uh, ahead of us we have to ask ourselves but not only that to give proper answers to three main questions how we will learn where we will learn and when we will learn we ask <coughs> such questions because uh, we have to be in line with the trends in education as the, inter as the international experience and the experience of uh, uh, countries uh, recording success in this process show. We are heading towards personalized education. Uh, the school, as it is now, uh, for walls with, uh, with the desks and uh, uh, let's say a couple of dozen of, of pupils and the teacher, uh, such school will disappear. The physical class will convert into a virtual class. The virtual class will have no walls. The class will have no uh, uh, discrimination page on the uh, fabrication date. Let's say the birth date, but the class will be formed according to personal likes and dislikes. Uh, children of various ages will associate into virtual classes based solely on their preferences, on their uh, objectives for life, and uh, uh, breaking the physical barriers and gathering into virtual classes is one uh, major tendency in education. I could uh, cite examples, but I'm pretty sure you know them very well also. Uh, the next uh, trend is for the students to define by themselves their learning system. They will decide uh, what is of interest for them, uh, which are the mentors, the gurus, which will help them in, get a, in getting better educated, uh, what sources of information they should, uh, they should uh, use, and uh, who with will they gather in order to debate subjects, to set problems, to solve problems, and uh, in one uh, sentence, uh, learn by doing and not learn by memorizing. Uh, virtual learning uh, is also a major tendency in the years to come. Uh, virtual learning implies uh, not uh, discarding the classical means of education but augmenting such means uh, by introducing the, the results of the fabulous progress in the science and technology regarding information, information and communication uh, technology. Virtual learning will mean nothing uh, unless uh, uh, communication is uh, developed accordingly and uh, smart, smart web uh, is one of uh, the means offering uh, possibility of communication. Uh, this uh, <coughs> uh, this uh, availability of uh, smart web implies also large availability of uh, educational content 
and this educational content uh, is uh, produced in several ways, but uh, more and more importance is gained by the uh, three-dimensional thinking, in which projection into coordinates expands to uh, a multiple uh, number of coordinates. <coughs> As I said, uh, uh, students like and uh, struggle for being members of uh, various groups of interests. When I say interests, I mean from the uh, uh, educational point of view and uh, belonging to something uh, is a stimulating fact factor. Uh, activity uh, in our uh, society and in the period uh, ahead of us uh, cannot be conceived as, a, as the activity of an individual. The activity is based on teams and such teams are consolidated by working together in a sort of association of some kind. Another trend which uh, I would like to mention is the ubiquitous learning. That means uh, I can learn, doesn't matter when, doesn't matter where, and doesn't matter with what uh, uh, help uh, provided by the information technology. It means that instead of uh, listening in the classroom to a lesson, uh, which is uh, delivered by the teacher to a number of students, I will be able to learn about that subject alone, at home, or uh, uh, wherever I am, when I am in the uh, disposition for learning, and to use the presence of the teacher in the classroom, and also the presence of, our, of my colleagues, to discuss what I uh, uh, thought it is interesting in the subject and uh, the ubiquity uh, enables me with the possibility to learn whenever I have the possibility from the point of view of the, the time and the means. Uh, we would like to contribute converting the traditional school into an intra-connected school, let us say, in which uh, everybody in the school uh, belongs to a local area network and from this uh, intermediate stage to go to the full online school, uh, uh, assuming, as I said, that uh, there are no barriers, no walls, no uh, uh, geographical position restrictions, no language barriers, and uh, well, I, uh, I didn't go in many more details than that. Uh, I had uh, many more slides, but uh, I think I told you the essential of what I wanted to convey to you, and I would very gladly reply to any answer to any question from uh, on your behalf. I thank you for attention.
but uh, um, it's uh, very hard to implement it. Um, and the uh, second uh, idea, <coughs> we had uh, this practical problem that uh, a teacher for IT uh, was ill and uh, nobody could uh, replace him. And I told the uh, principal, why not uh, put a, a, a video clip from Khan Academy with the same principles of IT, how to use Google Apps or something, and uh, another teacher who is not on the same subject can just oversight the, the classroom. And he said, uh, well, our uh, projectors are not connected to the internet. Okay, so these kind of issues and the, the most important one, uh, the, the investment plan is made by the mayor and uh, the board of the school has nothing uh, in power to modify that and the fact that the principal if opposes an, uh, an investment plan with roofs or something that is not necessary instead of putting uh, uh, internet uh, connection to the projector he can be dismissed because he is not hired for uh, by a, a competition he is just temporary appointed so how we gonna sell this to the uh, the teachers world and uh, the, the uh, educational decisions were in Romania. Thank you. Well, I understand exactly what you said because uh, we have been confronted, uh, I wouldn't say daily, but uh, extremely frequently with such problems. This is a real problem. And there are several uh, possible solutions to it. First of all, is uh, in this uh, slide uh, saying that the teacher will become an experienced student. He himself will have to learn. He himself will have to keep pace with the development, developments in, uh, uh, in his subject of interest, but also with the developments in the world. So, uh, speaking about uh, the incapacity of using the computer, uh, we we have to, to consider the need to eradicate uh, digital illiteracy uh, and this is a must in, the, in our society. I am not uh, saying slogans about uh, the need uh, has been expressed in the Digital Agenda 2020 or so, but it is pretty obvious that uh, inability to, uh, to be friendly and cope with the uh, IT and C uh, uh, means is a great handicap nowadays. Uh, now about uh, replacing uh, the teacher power by a video clip. Uh, this unfortunately or fortunately uh, will perhaps never be possible. Uh, I, uh, I, I always thought why should I go uh, to the amphitheater with the students and deliver them a course when an actor, let's say Stefani uh, Vartake, uh, God bless him, could uh, <coughs> play this role of teacher deliver, delivering the course much better than me. He had a beautiful voice, he was a beautiful person, he had a fabulous memory. He could deliver the, the, the course in the same manner as me. Perhaps. And yet things do not happen in this way because beyond simply reproducing the, the, the course, there is something else. You have to cooperate with the students. The activity must be interactive unless it is interactive activity uh, is doomed to fail. Even the, the digital uh, courses, the reusable learning objects are highly interactive because the, the student must be uh, stimulated to participate.
participate in the, in the game and by doing that to acquire not only, uh, let's say, uh, notions but also knowledge and this is very important. I am not talking about replacing the teacher with a video but replacing the void with a lesson on a video because the teacher couldn't be there. It was just it was just a temporary solution, of course. Yeah, but I, I call that the bad management and not a, a failure of the education system. Just, just bad management. Lack of inspiration uh, of that uh, principle. Unable to cope with an emergency situation. Which generalizes in our school. Yeah. Because the IT teachers maybe should be replaced by uh, uh, librarians from Bibliomet because uh, the salaries in IT in Romania are uh, uh, at the management level and uh, you can find uh, passionate uh, teachers at salaries of 100 euros or 200 so you will never have good teachers in IT Yes, so but, uh, but, but if we take this line of contact, we will never start we, uh, we can We process. can have the librarians teach uh, digital literacy to our kids. There is no limitation to this point of view. Everybody who is qualified to do that, and by being qualified, understands to prove that has not only the knowledge, but also the, the desire and the, how to say, the, the talent to, to performing that field is, is well everybody. Thank you. structure, organized, 
in time, what happens with the impact of the technology about uh, humanity and uh, what uh, social effect has this uh, very rapid change of technology. And I believe it is necessary to understand more the impact on the people, the impact on the society, and sure to have in mind any time that uh, the people must be more educated, must understand more what happens with them in the future. Because we must to analyze what will be in the next 10 years, 20 years, because the technology is a bit develop very fast and the people must to run to keep in touch with the technology and that's case who we are obliged to analyze and to give us solutions to learn more to be prepared all the people to uh, be connected with this uh, intelligence in our uh, environment i talked in this morning about uh, ambiental intelligence about the intelligent agents and how to cooperate, how to work human people, human and uh, artificial agents. And I believe it's important uh, university to change the mentality of professor, mentality of the student, and must to cooperate together to change structural change of the education systems and also to have in mind the change in curriculum. It's very important to understand that uh, we are in the beginning of this uh, new cycle. Uh, the very important challenges for the engineers are uh, have a large pressure about the education systems. In this case, I propose to continue this discussion, but uh, it is necessary to create a forum to give some uh, roadmap to work in this direction. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, yes, we shall try to do this. And uh, now I would like to, to put a question to Mr. Kevorkian because with what conclusions are you going to do after you have heard? Because you said one of the people who have resisted from the beginning to the end. So, from this point of view, the phenomenon Social networking la ora actuală este clar într-o într etapă de uh, acumulare capitală. Să nu uităm că pentru anul 2020 sunt prognozate undeva în jur de 40 de zetabaiți trafic mondial. Că la ora actuală avem folosit în zona enterprise 20% informație ca informație structurată 80 nestructurată și ne punem întrebarea cât de riguros este decizia la nivelul acestor companii și cât folosim din resursele informaționale ale companiei în procesul de decizie dacă nu mai 20 din ele sunt structurate. Este clar că în perioada următoare va fi un asalt mare în partea de analiza acestor volume mari de informații, iar Big Data va fi unul dintre marile uh, challenge marile provocări ale următorilor șase ani. Uh, deja asistăm în zona Enterprise la produse care știu să analizeze pe bază de soluții de text mining uh, opiniile celor din social, și să tragă concluzii despre produse, despre idei. Poate, cine știe, în jur de 2020 vom avea și metricile necesare pentru a compara opinii sociale exprimate în media și a face suport de decizie la nivel, la nivel social, iar decidenții la nivel social pot să ia aceste metri și să-și calibreze discursul public pentru a nu apare de derapaj în zona publică. Este clar că vom asista la schimbări drastice de tehnologie. Vor apărea practic domenii noi în planul noi în zona de cognitive computing peste big data. Tehnologie
tehnologiile deja horizontal sunt oferite și cei care furnizează cloud furnizează și tehnologii în acest sens. Deci urmează o perioadă interesantă din punct de vedere tehnologic să vedem cum face în loc acestor provocări în curicula universitară și cum reușim să ne educăm tinerii studenți în tehnologie în spiritul anului 2020. Cam eu cu aici ai ales subiectele care mi-au rămas mie din această discuție de astăzi. Poate vom vedea și niște comparații de metrici printre evenimentele din primăvara arabă, între discuțiile care au fost acolo. Și vom avea multe surprize tehnologice în ceea ce va urma. Un singur lucru aș vrea să adaug. Apar meserii în ochi. Și aș menționa aici una singură, cea de data scientist, care este o combinație de tehnologie matematică de ce s-a spus mai devreme, foarte multă statistică e nevoie în această cultură și vom înlocui funcționarul public de acum dintr-un minister cu un fel de data scientist care să se știe să-și consulte sursele de date din Big Data, să și le aducă în rețeaua proprie, așa, într-un private cloud, din public cloud în private cloud, să știe să le proceseze și să dea informație consistentă spre decidenți care pot să construiesc politici uh, rigoroase. Și eu vreau să lăsăm niște gânduri deosebite. Eu aș pleca astăzi sau cum aș întoarce la o remarcă pe care domnul profesor Dumitrache a făcut-o în dimineața aceasta, și anume că tehnologia a luat-o <laughs> razna, cum se zice, de s-a dezvoltat și e un trend impresionant de dezvoltare tehnologică. Dar avem sentimentul că noi oamenii rămânem din ce în ce mai în urmă. Deci vorbim astăzi și în contextul acesta despre educație, despre și prezentarea domnului profesor Ionescu a fost absolut impresionantă în sensul evoluției tehnologice pe această zonă, dar când ne întoarcem către școala românească cu ceea ce s-a întâmplat sau ceea ce puțin când s-a ridicat preșul, ce a putut să iasă la suprafață în vara aceasta cu fraudele de la bacaloreat și din alte chestii și este doar o umbră de ceea ce se întâmplă pentru că în realitate, în învățământ, știm cu toții că este o situație absolut dezastroasă din punct de vedere moral. Cum credeți că această, hai să spunem, reechilibrare, factorul uman, unde rămâne <laughs> și cum anume, sau ce anume ar trebui făcut ca totuși factorul uman să se ridice la nivelul tehnologic? Astăzi, tehnologia oferă atât de multe abilități, iar cei care sunt sau au acces la aceste abilități, trebuie să aibă totuși și setul de valori pentru a le utiliza în zona ceea ce ar trebui făcut. Și mă întorc la domnul profesor Ionescu pentru că sunt convins că trebuie să fie frământat de această problemă.
nu facem ce le stăm cu ca atât cât suntem noi în stare să contribuim la spre mai bine, atunci sigur că suntem uh, sortiți să, să pierim. Și noi am adoptat un slogan, mă rog, nu, nu mi-a parține, l-am găsit și eu la cineva și l-am adoptat așa, fără rezerve, ca în toate domeniile, think big, start small, deliver quickly. Cred că altă care nu avem Să știm unde vrem să ajungem, să nu ne propunem să ajungem mâine acolo, dar dacă am făcut un pas ăla să fie bine făcut și rapid, să nu mai tărăgănăm ce avem de făcut. Dacă îmi permiteți o quick fix, domnul Autor. În businessul de retail, unde lucrez de mai bine de 10 ani, există o meserie nouă, mystery shopper. Inspectorii noștri de la, din Ministerul Educației trebuie să fie undercover. În așa fel încât ei să testeze integritatea profesorilor, decanilor și așa mai departe. Asta e o soluție pe care o poți importa în, în business. Așa cum a fost prins acel rector de la uh, Constanța, că îl cunoaștem împreună ce i-a putut pielea de înainte, uh, au fost uh, angajați ai statului, dar nu de la Ministerul Educației. Trebuiau să fie de la Ministerul Educației și să nu-i cunoască nimeni. Mulțumesc! Așa și au rezolvat asigurările de Israel, problemele, asigurările de sănătate, problemele cu Mă rog, să spunem, utilizarea fraudulată a fondurilor la sumelor de asigurare. Și sunt pacienți imaginari care se duc la medici, la farmaciști și încearcă tertipuri, să spunem, neortodoxe pentru a obține ceea ce nu ar fi îndreptățit să obține. Și în felul acesta sunt filtrați cei care sunt oameni serioși și ceilalți. Bun, o să găsească de lucru în altă parte, în aceeași manieră, dar sperăm că să-i puținează. Domnul Doamna Moise, vreau să spun o vorbă. A spus o întrebare și mă preguntă de foarte mult timp ce se întâmplă cu sistemul de educație și unde sunt problemele. Ar vrea doar să spun că nu se definește clar statutul de ascăt de societate. Și dacă nu se asigură condițiile optime pentru ca un astfel să fie respectat, respectul fiind determinat de calitatea și responsabilitatea acestuia pentru societate, nu vom reuși să modificăm ceva. Motiv pentru care problema noastră nu sunt elevii, pentru că elevii au luat înainte mult o dască. Sunt foarte rapizi în gândire, sunt foarte legați de tehnologia nouă. Problema este la dascării care au rămas în urmă, nu găsesc soluții pentru a recupera, nu sunt susținuți de sistem, pentru că sistemul ar trebui să susțină, un sistem de educație ar trebui să aibă într-adevăr prioritate pentru națiune și pentru guvern și în condițiile în care nu se tratează cu seriozitate formarea viitorului dască, pentru că de cei în vârstă nu avem ce să mai facem. Asta e. Dar să formăm o nouă generație de dască, atașați, pasiuni. Pentru că meseria de dască se face cu pasiune, cu dragoste pentru copii și atașament față de profesia pe care și-a ales-o de a forma noi generații de tine. Deci, astea sunt problemele care ar trebui avut în vedere atunci când se fixează bugetul și mai ales atunci când se selectează cadre didactice pentru o catedră sau altă. Mulțumesc mult de tot, profesor. Toată această dezbatere de astăzi a fost filmată cu accentul dumneavoastră la fi public. Deci, pe site-ul bsivan.org puteți descărca filmul acestei dezbateri de dimineață și până la sfârșit. Dacă mai există ceva de spus. Deci, în afară, sunt convins că deja fiecare din dumneavoastră are numeroase alte întrebări decât răspunsuri. Vă rog, profesor. În completarea la ceea ce a spus domnul academician, vreau să spun un singur exemplu, pe care îl foarte bine. Republica Sud-Coreană, care știți foarte bine că este a opta putere economică a lumii, deci intrat în grupul celor 10, a investit în ultimii 5, da, aproape 20 de ani 
15% din PIB în învățământ. 15%. Deci 1 și 5 la învățământ și regulamentul școlar este punitiv atât pentru elevi cât și pentru profesori. Deci, în Corea de Sud este un respect, cum să spun eu, dumnezeesc față de cadrul profesoral, atât la nivel inferior, deci la preșcolar, mediu, gimnazial și mai ales în mediu superior. Dar 15% din de 20 de ani în învățământ este cel mai mare uh, investment în, în, în învățământul, în, în general în învățământ, pentru a ajunge tehnologia de care vorbim, nivelul mental și progresul acestei țări. Mulțumesc! Și eu vă mulțumesc, domnule profesor. Vă mulțumim tuturor pentru efortul de a, de a fi cu noi și de a fi aici până la această oră. Deci, intenția noastră este, în primul rând, de a face în cadrul revistei pe care o avem scrisor de la Marea Neagră un număr special, o ediție specială și acei dintre dumneavoastră care doresc să contribuie la această ediție specială. Deci, vă adresăm cu gămintă, poate chiar din partea Sibeco sau dumneavoastră personal o să aveți o, o prezentare. Este o revistă care se distribuie în 12 țări și în toate universitățile din această zonă. De asemenea, deci, propunerea făcută de domnul profesor Dumitrache de a gândi un laborator sau poate un centru de cercetare cu privire la impactul acestor tehnologii asupra societății, în general, poate că este o idee pentru care probabil că vom mai discuta. Dumneavoastră ați avut viziuni de genul acesta care au prins deja roade. Viitoarea întâlnire din, în acest format a venit deja ca o propunere din partea societății civile, deci câteva organizații neguvernamentale au propus pentru primăvara anului următor, deci undeva în luna aprilie, mai, un forum al acestei societăți civile cu participarea universităților pe un cadru internațional, deci cercând să alegem de data aceasta un, o problematică mai îngustă, chiar și aceasta de astăzi s-a dovedit a fi mult prea largă. Și cu aceste elemente, dacă dumneavoastră aveți alte propuneri, deci noi pe pagina PSUN vom avea un forum, așa cum a recomandat domnul profesor Dumitrache, există această facilitate. O să vă transmitem pe mail-urile dumneavoastră invitația de a participa la acest forum și să sperăm că e un început, un bulgăre de zăpadă care o să genereze o mișcare pentru perioada următoare. Vă mulțumesc din suflet, o seară plăcută și să ne vedem cu